35A on the bottom of the page. I don't know about it. No, I think we can do this. Kind of, uh, 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 let's that, say we're going to call in later. Oh. It's going okay, to. Okay, turn it It's five lines in the bottom. It's called an abraisa. Asalai ladam shi hanam and ailam asabalai blacha. It's forbidden for a person to have enjoyment from this world without a blessing. The cholanena. And anyone that has enjoyment from this world without a blessing, Mal, he it's considered like he had benefit from things that were sanctified to God. And it's a violation of the Me'ila. It's like having a benefit from a sacrifice. So what should he do? Go to the wise man. The Kumar says, What's the Chacham going to do? It's not that we don't have a confession uh, uh, thing in our religion. What's the Chacham going to do for him if he did a sin? The Elam Rava Rav says, No, you go to the Chacham before you eat the fruit so that uh, you should know what bracha you should make and what bracha, if you have to make a bracha or not. And then you won't come to Me'ila. It's not after the fact, it's before the Okay. Because my takante, what's the rectification? Means for the following time that he should come to this. Amar Rav Yudah, Amar Shmuel. Rav Yudah says, name of Shmuel. Kol anenem anay lam azeb alay bracha kil anenem ikat shishamayim. Anyone that has enjoyment from this world without a blessing, it's as if he has pleasure from things that are sanctified to heaven. Shnem al Hashem ar tzimloya. Because it says in the Pasuk, to Hashem, is the earth and all that fills it. That means Hashem owns everything. So everything is sanctified. And you're having enjoyment. He didn't say a bracha. Rablevi Rami. Rablevi did the same thing, but he put it as a contradiction. This ksiv, one pasuk says, Lashem Aretzim Laya. So Hashem is the earth and all that fills it. Ksiv, and there's another pasuk that says, Hashemayim Shemayim Lashem. The doctor's not here. Sorry, not here. Hashemayim Shemayim Lashem. The heavens is the heavens to God. Bars Nasam Adam. And the earth is given to man. So what's going on? One says that the earth, the Hashem is the earth and all that fills it. Other passage says the earth was given to man. Umar says, like kash, it's not a question. Kan kaidim bracha, kan liyasa bracha. Depends if you said a bracha or not. Before the bracha, it belongs to Hashem. After the bracha, then it belongs to man. Amr Abchanina Bar Papa. Abchanina Bar Papa says, anyone that has enjoyment from this world without a blessing, he steals from Hashem. It's as if he steals from Hashem and the Jewish people. Shenemar, as it says, look at this passage. Someone steals from his father and mother. He says, I am committing no transgression here. He's a friend of a destructive person. Okay. What is someone stealing from his parents? What he's doing is he's saying, look, it's going to be mine anyway after 120. So why are, I'm not really doing a sin. I'm just taking it up slightly early. No, we have the so, I'm sorry? No, we have the shepherd. <laughs> right. That, like the light. Uh... So here's someone that's that. I think what he's thinking is he's eating without a bracha. I think maybe what he's saying is maybe I'll say an after bracha, or maybe whatever it is he's taking it too too early. Oh, he says it, it could be mine anyway. It could be mine anyway. So let me just take it now without saying a bracha. So it says like this: He's stealing from his father. So his father is Hashem. Is he not your father that acquired you? And is he not? Uh, and uh, a mother is only is the Jewish people. You see, the Torah Simecha. Don't forget, don't forsake the Torah of your mother, which means the, the, the Torah of the Jewish people. So uh, he's stealing from his father and his mother. What's he stealing from his father? He's stealing the food, that's what I would have said, because he's taking it without a bracha. Rashi says, the chaser. he's stealing the bracha. God is supposed to get the bracha. You didn't give him the bracha. It's a chiddush and yeah. rashi. It's, not, it's, it's counterintuitive. We were, we were running this way. It came now, what are you stealing from the Jewish people? 
uh, what happens is, is that there's a, bless, a blessing that goes into the produce if you say blessings on it. And if you don't say the blessings, then the produce doesn't get the blessing. Blessings from God. So you a person that doesn't say a bracha steals from the from the um, the, the produce that comes. Doc Hollywood says it's on the ten blessings. Yeah, he's on the wrong unit. Oh, so let me send. I asked. Let me send him a link. Okay. We're we're using the same link. So one second, let's do this. Okay. Is that okay now? So my chaver who lives What does it mean? He's a friend of a destructive person. I'm Rav Chanina Bar Papa. Same opinion as before. Chaver who Yeravim Ben 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 Nevach. The Hishva says the Sol Aviv Shlosh Amayim. So interesting. They put him as a friend, person that eats without a bracha of Yeravim Ben Nevach that caused the Jewish people to sin. How does what's the association? I guess the uh, people see that he's eating without a blessing and they'll follow his example. And that's considered like a friend of your Rabbi Ben Nevat that caused the Jewish people to sin. Rabbi Chanina Bar Papa, again Rabbi Chanina Bar Papa, Rami, he posed a contradiction. Ksiv, in one place it says, I will take my grain in its time. This is God talking. It means he'll take his grain back. Like, uh, if the rain keeps up, it won't get wet. That's, you know, that's God takes his grain, right? So, Takes his grain in his time. And another pasuk says, "You will gather the grain." What's going on? God will take it, or we will gather it. The says, "Like Kasha, come this month, Yisrael, I some initial market." Depends. If the Jewish people are doing the will of Hashem, then we'll gather the grain. Come this month, I some initial market. And if we're not doing the will of Hashem, then then Hashem takes the grain back. Now. Which paragraph does it save us after the Ganatha end? And Bahayim Shemaya, in which we show the will of Hashem, everything is perfect. Taisvis is going to make a comment, but we'll see what Taisvis will we'll, we'll understand the comment better after we learn the next Gemara. Tanar Abbanan says in the Pasuk, I'm sorry, it's taught in the Brisa, the Pasuk says, the Ganatha, the, you will gather your grain. What's that coming to teach us? You will gather your grain. As well, because in Yeshua it says that this book of the Torah shall not depart from your mouth. Maybe that means literally that you should have to constantly talk Torah. You should never stop even for one moment. Talmud Leim of us after the Ganech it says no. You're going to have to do some work. You're going to have to gather your grain. You're going to stop there. You should practice together with the Torah the way of the world, which is. That you do work and on your free time you study Torah. Different Rabbi Shmuel, that's the word of Rabbi Shmuel. So, the Safta de Ganecha is teaching me that the Yomer Sefer term is Hemipicha is not uh, literal, it just means that in your free time you'll, you'll, uh, you'll study Torah. Rabbi Shimon Ben Yichayim, Rabbi Shimon Ben Yichayim has a different opinion. He says, Efshad and Kheresh Bishas Kurisha, the possible person is going to plow in the time for plowing, Sereya Bishas Ria, he'll sow. It means plant the, the seeds in the time of planting. Harvest at the time of harvesting. He'll thresh at the time of threshing. He'll winnow at the time when the wind blows. How's he going to be able to study Tyra? He has his whole calendar. He's all filled in already. He doesn't have any time for, uh, for the shirim. So much time for it? Ella, rather... I'll give you, I'll tell you a chat Ella Bismanchi is so like some initial maka and maka is different. How does he do the resolve the contradiction? Gather your grain and the Torah should not depart from your mouth. If the Jewish people are fulfilling the will of Hashem, Malach and Asal Yideh Chirim, then others will do the work for you. Strangers will stand up and they'll pasture your sheep. Bismanchi is so like some initial maka and if the Jewish people aren't fulfilling the will of Hashem, Malachta, Nasus Ali the Yatsman, the work is done by themselves. Shinemar Va Safta the Ganecha. You will gather your grain. Mahim Shemaya is when you're not fulfilling the will of Hashem. 
the words mean when you're fulfilling the will of Hashem, when you will listen to it, it comes out the opposite. So Tesis is bothered by this. That's, yes. Um, it, what comes out according to this Tesis and my Shach said this that um, that uh, because in the second parsha of the Shema it doesn't say Bechol Ma'idcha, Bechol Ma'idchem, with all your might to help Mesir Snafesh. So it's yes, it's doing the will of Hashem, but it's not doing it completely like the way the first parsha is. That's how um, that's how it's explained. Um, not only this, we're not doing the will of Hashem, we'll have to do the will, the work of Adish. You'll serve your enemy. I'll, I'll tell you how the Alter will this in a moment. Many people try to practice Rabbi Shmuel's lifestyle, which is that you that you study in your free time, but you also have a job. And it, uh, they were they were uh, effective. They were uh, they were successful. They tried. They also be Adam. They weren't successful. His, he, he was. Others will do you, do the work for you. They tried, hoping others will do the work. They ended up uh, that nothing was done. So they weren't successful. Amalei Rav or Rabbanan, they were not. Rav says to the Rabbanan, "The Matusim Inaicha, I beg of you." In the days of Yisrael, in the days of Tishrei, don't come to see me. That's the busy time in the field. The days of Nisan, days of Tishrei. I don't want you to be bothered by Parnassah the whole year. Make sure that in those busy seasons you take off time to make Parnassah, then the rest of the year you'll be able to learn. Don't, uh, those, don't sacrifice those times. Okay, um, there's a contradiction between this Gemara and the Gemara Menachas that we read. Uh, we need everybody to please the mute so their phone on, on Zoom. Thank you. You have to get a job and study Torah on the side. The Shem Ben Yechai's opinion is that no, don't get a job, uh, just study Torah. Everything else is going to be taken care of by other people. In the Gemara Menachas over there is discussing the Tamit, the, the word. Lahalis Ner Tamid, that it says that it should be constantly lit. What does it mean, constantly lit in the morning and the evening? Or, or um, the Lefanai Tamid by the bread, I forget exactly which one. But anyway, over there, there was a Rabbi Shmuel has a, a nephew who says, Me that studied the whole Torah, can I now learn Greek? <coughs> he said, If you can find the time that's in between the day and the night, then you can study. Because the Gisa Bayaman Valaila. Which means that you're never allowed to do anything else other than study Torah. Mm-hmm. And Rav Shimba Yechai over there says no. Well, he says that Perakeh Chachris, Perakeh Harvis is enough. You only have to study one chapter in the morning, one chapter in the evening. They each contradict with uh, each other. One of the answers is that Rav Shimba Yechai was in the cave. When he comes out of the cave, he was burning up everything that he looked at. So God says, go back in one more year and come out. So, Rav Shimba Yechai changed his opinion. Normally, you don't answer contradictions by saying that they changed their opinion. That's not the way we do it. But over here, we clearly know that there was a lesson that he learned. So, it could be over here, he said that what people are working, this is before he went, before he went in for the last year. This is upset people were working. So, oh, the Rav Shimba is not going to answer. Anyway, the Alter Rebbe in the Elfas Tamatera in the Kanchi Sachran, discusses this contradiction, and he answers that our Gemara is talking about before a person has studied the whole Torah. That Gemara over there is talking about after a person has studied the whole Torah. Over here, Rabbi Shmuel, uh, Rabbi Shmuel um, <coughs> could be the Machlech says what's considered the whole Torah. I'm not sure, but Rabbi Shmuel Yechai over here says, how are you going to uh, get the whole Torah if you don't, uh, if, you, if you do these other things? You won't be able to. And al Rebbe says, that a person can study the whole Torah and accomplish it um, by, by the age of 20. And even though he gets married at 18, but for two years after the, after the wedding, uh, he doesn't have such a um, uh, significant burden of Parnassah, 
you can still study Torah. Yosef and then after. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's how it, that's the, and over there it's talking about the, where does Rav Shimba Yechai say Perek Echad Shachis, Perek Echad Arvis? That is after he's already studied the whole Torah. He just has to learn every day. Okay. Omar Rabba Barbachanam Rabbi Yechanan, Rabba Barbachanam says in the name of Rabbi Yechanan, Mishum Rabbi Huda Rabbi Loi, going back to the Tanoim, Rabbi Huda Rabbi Loi, Boyere, come and see. Shaloi, Kedar Sayyushin, Kedar Sachrainim, the early generations are not like the later ones. The early ones were much better. Kedar Sayyushin, Masut Taras and Kaval Malach than a right. Zubazun is Kaima Biyadam. The early generations, the Torah was the main thing. The, the, the work was primary. I'm sorry. The Torah was primary. The work was um, secondary. secondary. All right, temporary. And they were successful. The later generations, they made their work primary and their Torah secondary. They weren't successful in either. They were not. Not. Another statement. Come and see, like their session, their session, the early generations are not like the later generations. Their session, and may I make some pairs, same their tracks of mine. They would, the early generations would take their produce in from the field through the main door. They will have them in Meister to make it higher than Meister because the rule by Meister is that after your produce is, is uh, complete, when you bring it into the house, that's when you have to tie <coughs> the switches. Yeah, we had this recently, marriage. right. Uh, the later generations, they bring their produce in through the roofs, through the courtyards, through the enclosures. They look for minimizer to make it exempt from my They do tricks to make everything exempt. So Rabbiani, Rabbiani says, "Ain't a tevel mishayv ma'aser to your plan bias." It's only chayv and ma'aser. It's only obligated to tithe to give it to the levy once it sees the front of the house. Remember, Biyati HaKadosh Menavayas, it says, I've removed the, he's referring to, that he's claiming, he's saying that he's kept all the laws of Maiser. It says, I've removed the, sanct- the, the sanctified from the house. Rabbi Yechanan Amar, Rabbi Yechanan says, Apil HaTzegevas, that the courtyard also makes it obligated in Maiser, uh, if it's an enclosed courtyard. Shnema Vachla B'Sharech B'Saveyo, you'll eat in your gates. Frank, a courtyard, you'll be satisfied. That means that that's considered a permanent eating, which would make a person high in my sir. Okay, so we compare the earlier generations to the later generations regarding Taira and regarding my sir. Okay, Chutzman Ayai and the Mishnah says that what bracha do you say on fruits? You say Bayer Pirates, but not on wine. And wine, you say Bayer Pirates. Wine is considered a fruit. Mar says, Mishnah Ayai, what's the difference? Wine that has its own bracha. Do you say because it's improved from the grape to the wine to the bottle? So that's Ishtani le bracha. So therefore, the bracha is also improved. It's uh, you have a bayer piyagafen instead of a bayer piyates. One second, very shemen olive oil. Ishtani le it's also improved. Le ishtani le bracha, and the bracha hasn't changed. What bracha do you say on olive oil? Apparently, Bayer Piyates. Let's see. Dumb Rabbi Yudam Rashmol, Vachin, and Rabbi Yitzchak, and Rabbi Yechon, and Shemazayas, and Rabbi Yechon, and Bayer Piyates. You say Bayer Piyates on olive oil. And it's improved. Someone eats liquid. Drinks the Okay. It's like you have to wait well, two pages. We don't say it. Huh? For the liquid. You don't say it. Wait, you'll see. You'll see. It's a whole Gemara. It's all discussion. No, no, no. Uh, wait. No, uh, it's besides for that. The Gemara is going to explain some. There's more detail. It's also not Allah. Okay, Amri, they say like this: What are you going to say on a on a on a on olive oil? What are you going to what what blessing can you say? Are you going to say who blessed is God, etc., that created the fruit of the olive? Now, what is the fruit of the olive? The fruit of the olive is the oil. Now, the problem is, is that God didn't make the oil. Man made the oil with the help of God. But God made the olive. But you can't say the fruit of, blessed is who created the fruit of the olive. Perugufa's ayasakri, the fruit is called the olive. Nabrachala bayupri eats ayas. Oh, so we'll have to address the, 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 the bracha. We could say who created the fruit of the olive tree, which is the olive. 
and that's what we'll say when we drink the oil. So we have a blessing. Let's say that uh, improved blessing for olive oil. Elama Marzutra, Marzutra explains. Chamra Zion, wine sustains. In Mishcha Zion, but olive oil doesn't sustain. It's like nourishing. The, the wine is nourishing health benefits of wine, olive oil doesn't have those, uh, does, doesn't have that nourishment. Or it says, whoa, one second. Mishcha zayin. Olive oil is not nourishing, it doesn't sustain. Batanan, we have a Mishnah. Anayi der I don't know if it's a Mishnah. Anayi der if someone takes a vow from sustenance, means food, takes a vow from food, so mutter b'mayim b'melach, he's allowed to eat Water and salt, that's not considered food, nourishing, it's not considered nourishing. We ask him, so water and salt is the only thing that's not called sustenance, rather. But everything else in the world is called sustenance. It's included in that. Those would be shahako. But here we're talking about um, sustenance, and we're saying that everything doesn't go into the, under that category. Everything goes under that category except for water and salt. Name it every tilted Ravishmoel to be a Kasha and Ravishmoel, the Amri, they said, Aim of Archimber, Minim Zensel, Ella Bahamian in Bilvag. Notice in our Mishnah, we spoke about Peripiates, spoke about Peripiadama. Later on, we'll talk about Shahako. The Bracha Barmin Mazenus comes from the Amiroim, I think, apparently. I don't, I'm not sure if it's in the Mishnah. I have to look that up. But here, Rav and Shmuel tell us that when do you say Mazenus? Only on the grain. So we're saying that everything is considered Mazen except for water and salt. Rav and Shmuel say the word Mazen, Mazenus, is only on the five grains. So it's a contradiction between Rav and Shmuel and this uh, Mishnah. Bam Ravuna, so Ravuna resolves this by saying, Baimer Kol Hazan Alai. He doesn't say Mazen, use a different term. Kol Hazan, anything that's nourishing. That's going to be under the under the oath, things that he's not allowed to eat. Alma, so every that would include everything. Alma Mishka Zion. One of those things that's included in anything that's sustaining or nourishing would be olive oil. So why doesn't olive oil get a, its own improved bracha just like wine does? Elacham Sod, a Mishkalay Sod, rather no. Wine satiates, it makes a person full. But olive oil, Mishka Sod, it doesn't make a person full. Says one second. I would say I. I would ask the other way. Uh, oil shouldn't make a person full. I would assume it does, but the Gemara takes it the other way. Chamer misad. Does wine make a person full? Vaharava. Habi shosi chamer kol mali yemi de pista keche de nagre libe. Rava all erev Pesach was drinking wine to increase his appetite. It's not making him full. It's making him hungry. Bnei chamatz tfei. So he'll be able to eat more matzah. Apparently, wow. this it's better to eat more masa. I thought it was only a kazayas. No, maybe it means that um, that to, to eat masa with uh, with more appetite oh, yeah. doesn't mean more quantity wise, but more with more appetite. So apparently, the wine makes him hungry. Umar explains two vagarit. A lot of wine makes you hungry. Porta a little bit of wine satiates. I don't know how much. Places over here mentions. That from here it appears that you're not allowed to drink wine in Erev Pesach in the afternoon, and if you do drink, you have to drink a lot. Okay. So the Gemara says. The Gemara says. Umi said, "Klal, does it satiate?" Does wine really satiate? There's a problem. Wine gladdens the heart of man. And bread satiates the heart of man. Bread satiates and wine doesn't. Exactly. Uh, okay. Bread has two aspects. Soed umesameach. I'm sorry, wine. I'm sorry. Wine has two aspects. Um, 
it satiates and it gladdens. The nama bread The bread only satiates, but it doesn't gladden. So when you read that pasuk again, we thought that each one was exclusive. The wine gladdens, bread satiates. It's not true. The way you read the pasuk is that the bread satiates and wine satiates and gladdens. It has an extra component. Well, we just read the opposite of yeah. the wine. glad because it's tasty. Yeah. You just said it increases the wine. Yeah, we're talking about when you have a little bit of wine, not a lot. A lot of wine would still um, increase, would still increase the appetite. So, the Gemara says, one second. The hachi, if that's the case, that bread, that wine also satiates. We should bench on bread. I'm sorry, we should bench on wine. We should bench on wine. We should say uh, the three brachas of benching. The Gemara says, like Kavi and Ishu does a lot in love. Sorry? Not Manchalet. Three brachas. Manchalet should we do anyway. Yeah. We should make Brekas and Mazen on wine because it's, it satiates. The Gemara says that people don't establish their meal on wine. This is the part that. You cannot sustain. We're thinking that you can, but you don't establish a meal on it. What about if a person does establish his meal on wine? We know who he's talking about. So, what about such a person? Should he bench on the on wine? Amale, he has. It was going to have a great trick. What he's going to do is like this. He's going to bench on wine. And he's going to use the cup to bench. Hmm. So then, when he's finished benching, he drinks the cup. He has to bench again, and he benches with the cup. So, <laughs> okay. So okay. So what if he establishes this meal? Amalei Elio Elio is going to have to tell us if that's considered an established meal. But nowadays, um, before Elio and Avi comes. His mind is nullified in front of all other men, and that's that's considered abnormal to establish a meal on wine. Okay. Gufa. We start before. We have to go back to the discussion of olive oil. What brachas did we say olive oil is? For eights. Wine has an improved blessing. Why does it have an improved blessing? Because it satiates and it gladdens. For those reasons, it has this extra, it has a Bayupia Gafa. We learned before Rabbi Rabbi Demeshvol Vachinim, Rabbi Tzkam Rabbi Yechim, and Shem Ezayas, olive oil, and the Barkham love Bayupia. He say on it Bayupia. Hey, Chidami, how is he drinking this olive oil? He lame the Kashasule, is he just drinking it straight? He's with him That's going to damage him because someone that drinks straight olive oil um, can have, a, can damage his stomach. It's not that it'll be very unhealthy to have a cup of olive oil. The Tanan, and we even have a uh, the Tanya, we even have a, a brisa that says the following: shall truma. If someone drinks truma oil, and he's not a kayan, he wasn't allowed to drink it. He has to pay for it. If he ate it, if you eat truma, not only do you have to pay for what you ate, but you even have to have to pay an extra fifth. Now, if you damage it, you don't have to. If you damage the truma. You don't have to pay the extra fifth. But if you eat it, you have to pay the extra fifth. So, so let's say someone drinks olive oil. Mishalem is a Karen, Vena Mishalem is a He only pays for the price, for the principal value, but he doesn't pay the extra fifth. Why not? Because he's considered damaging the oil. It's not considered eating. It's so bad for you that it's not even considered edible. So, but if he puts the oil on his body, then Mishalem is a Karen, Mishalem is a Chemish. The, the, uh, the smearing the oil on your body is more eating than drinking it, than eating it, because it's more edible. That, that's, that's considered its consumption rather than eating it. So you see that drinking olive oil is damaging. So the Gemara is asking like this, that we said that olive oil is ha'etz. In what case is ha'etz? If he takes a, a gulp of olive oil, that's going to be damaging to him. He shouldn't have to say ha'etz on it. What should he say? Probably nothing. That's the way uh, you don't say any bracha on food that's damaging. The Rambam writes it. It's shahakal, but that's very surprising. Um, Rather, he's eating it with bread. 
Okay, mm-hmm. people have olive oil and bread, Mediterranean diet. Iachi, if so, have a We have the laws of primary and secondary. What bracha do you say if you have salad with a dressing? Only on the salad. You don't say a blessing on the dressing. If you have bread with a, with a cheese or butter or whatever, uh, you only say a bracha on the bread. So here, he's having bread with oil. Only say a bracha on the bread. Well, you're telling me that you say ha'etz on olive oil, not if you eat it with bread. This is the rule. If you have a primary and secondary, you only make the bracha on the primary. It must be that he's not eating with bread. He's drinking it with something called a nigrin. This is a drink. A drink. Yeah, it's like a bush. It's a drink that's um, made from beets. Damar Abba Bar Shmol, a nigrin may the silka. A nigrin is water from beets. On sigrin, this is even better. Maya the kulashalki. That's water from all cooked vegetables. So it's not just beets. It's probably it's a mixture of everything. The whole uh, salad in there. So, but it's it's the water probably from the boiled. Uh, so, it's a broth. So he's it, it, apparently this is a uh, uh, sanigrain. One of the ingredients in it is olive oil. They put olive oil in it and they drink it like that. So the Gemara says, "What are you trying to resolve over here? You're trying to say a ha'etz on olive oil." So you said that you can't eat with bread because you make the bracha on the bread because that won't be ha'etz either. So you're drinking with a nigrin. What's what bracha is a nigrin? In can have a nigrin if you're a But a nigrin is the main thing over there. Olive oil is secondary to the nigrin. Utanana was taught in a Mishnah, Zakal, this is the rule. Kolshavika remakes Vela, Mavarachalika, Preta Sats Vela. What bracha itself would a nigrin be? I think it says it's a dama. Maybe that was a liquid? Yeah. I think it says it's a dama. There's a complicated uh, discussion. What bracha is borscht? Do you have a comment in the article? What bracha is, is a nigrin? I think they quote from the Goinim that it's, uh, it's a dama. I have a commentary uh, that I was using for this. Told me it's Adama. An old, um, I've been using on brachas, an, uh, an old book from a rabbi from Fall River, Massachusetts. Okay, whatever the case is, he's going to make the bracha either Shahakal or Hadama. On the no, borscht, right. and he's not going to make the bracha of uh, on the olive oil of eight. So, what are you resolving over here? And when did Rab and Shmuel say, um, yeah, when did Rab and Shmuel or Rab Yechanan, Rab Yudam or Shmuel, or Rab Yitzchak or Rab Yechanan say that olive oil is eight? My answer is, I'll tell you the case. We're looking for a case where you're going to make a bracha on the olive oil. He has a sore throat, and it was uh, apparently. You drink olive oil, that's good for your throat. It's a medication. So, the, t- the Tanya, it was taught in a brisa, a cheshish begreine, someone that has a sore throat, le yarena b'shemen tchila b'shabbos. You shouldn't gargle it outright on Shabbos because there's a problem on Shabbos to take medicine. Unless it's a matter of life and death. But what's the problem on me- medicine on Shabbos? That you might grind herbs. You're allowed to take medicine and you're not allowed to grind. So, you can't do other types of medicine as well. It's a gzera, you might grind. So, this is a, to take olive oil, put it in his mouth and to gargle it, that's a type of medicine, which the next thing he's going to do is go grind herbs to, to heal his throat. So, you're not allowed to do that on Shabbos. So, what can you do if you have a sore throat? You can put olive oil into the nigun and swallow it. But it's like, am I allowed to eat chicken soup on Shabbos if, uh, for whatever pain I have? Chicken yeah. soup it heals everything. So, <laughs> so that's allowed because you're eating normally. Well, here, here, here we're saying if it's just the normal eating. Okay. So we're seeing that if you're going to have olive oil, um, then that's going to be for a sore throat. That's going to be the primary. Because why does he want it? To heal the sore throat. So he's going to make a ha'etz on it. The Gemara is a little surprised by this. It says pshita. Now, now it's obvious. The whole time we couldn't figure out the case. 
Now all of a sudden it becomes obvious. Because, in other words, based on the Mishnah that didn't tell me that the bracha changes, I need, Rav, I need Shmuel to tell me that the bracha is a eight, if that's the primary thing. And over here, apparently, it doesn't damage him either. Taisvis over here mentions, he doesn't like Rashi's chat, but uh, Rashi says that the problem over here is to, gar gargle, to, to gargle it. Um, but he's allowed to eat it straight with a nigrin. The problem is that we jumped two cases from gargling straight swallowing. to swallowing with a nigrin. Taisvis says, what about the middle case of swallowing it straight without a nigrin? You didn't say anything about that. And if you wanted to say that that it's only to gargle it that's the problem, but to eat it normally is okay. So then why do you have to say a nigrin? You, yeah. you, you missed the middle case. So Taisa says that no, eating it, that doesn't mean to gargle, even to take it straight means yareno, means okay. Um, the Gemara explains why is this a chidesh? You hear? I could have thought that since he's taking it for medicine, you don't say a bracha on medicine. Kamash Malan yeah. comes to teach us that because he has benefits from it, by Brook, he has to say a bracha. There's a big discussion here about flavored medicine. Is this that, that you do have a benefit, you do have because an enjoyment. Of medicine or just the flavor? That's, but it's that's the discussion. A regular food, though. Yeah, over here, it's a, over here it's a regular food. But based on this Kamara, they have a discussion. If you add a flavor to a medicine, that you enjoy that flavor, like they add the cough syrup or the kids, kids the things, should yes. they be saying a bracha on that? Because that's not really a food, but nevertheless it has it. You wouldn't, it's not something that you would drink. Okay, whatever. Kimcha <laughs> Yeah, you would never drink it, but nevertheless it has a flavor that you enjoy. Flour of wheat. Now, wheat, you can get every bracha out of wheat. You can get a shahakal, you can get a hadama, you can get a mezainus, and you can get a uh, a maizu. We'll see. What's the shahakal? You'll see. Kim chadachitu, flour of wheat. Rav Yudah mar bari priyadama. Rav Yudah says, if you're eating flour, you say bari priyadama. It's the kernel, just ground up. Paisus explains that it's dealing with toasted, or it also wouldn't really be edible. It's a toasted sort of uh, flour. Rav Nachman amar shakal in bari. Rav Nachman says that you say shahakal on it. Amalei rabba or Rav Nachman? Rabba. A rabba is supposed to be. In Morocco, you have some type of food that is roasted uh, so raw. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It, it's bar oh, barley, barley flour. Yeah. Okay, that's oh, going to come up over here. We'll, we'll see what bracha that is. The third group is starting up in Morocco. After I present Morocco, my wife is. Uh, okay, rabba tells to Rav Nachman. Again, Rav Nachman said that you say shahakal. He says, Lake Tipla Galad Rabbi Yehuda. Don't argue with Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yechon and Mishmol, Kaimi Kavasei. Rabbi Yechon and Mishmol, a hold like Rabbi Yehuda. Dumb Rabbi Yehuda, Mishmol. Rabbi Yehuda says the name of Shmuel. This is so interesting. Rabbi Nachman. Ra oh, Rabbi's telling Rabbi Nachman, don't argue with Rabbi Yehuda. Because Shmuel and Shmuel and Rabbi Yechon are holding here. The Chainam Rabbi Yitzchak, Rabbi Yechon, and Shem and Zayas, we're working on both creates. Shem and Zayas. You say your eights on it. Olive oil, you say your eights. Okay, what does that have to do with us? We're talking about flour. It says, well, you see that when I have one product and I change it into something else, the bracha remains intact. So to over here, I have one product. I have wheat, uh, wheat kernels, berries, probably it's called. And I change it, I grind it up. The bracha remains intact. It used to be hadama as a berry, a wheat no, berry. No, now it's hadama. No, but not yet. Now it's just a flower. So you see, Rav Yehuda, um, uh, don't argue with Rav Yehuda because he has support from Shmuel and Rav Yehuda. The Gemara says, me dummy, you're going to compare oil to flour? Awesome, Leslie Yachrina. Oil is its most improved state. It's the finished product. So it has the real bracha of what was originally. Ha'it. But over here, you're in the middle. It's an unfinished product. You're still supposed to make it into bread. And, and uh, therefore, it shouldn't have the bracha of its original bracha of Hadama. It could get another bracha. Nachman could be correct that it's going to be shahakal. 
says, You think if something is still going to be improved, you give it a shahakal, not a hadama. Is that what you're trying to say? says name of name of Shmuel, and raw pumpkin, and barley flour. You say a shahakal, my love. Why do you say barley flour? Barley flour is inferior to wheat. It must be the chiti bari priyadama. Must be that wheat is bari priyadama. Otherwise, it would have said wheat is shahakal, and then for sure uh, barley is shahakal. Gemara says like, no, the chiti nami shahakal nebitvari. Wheat is also shahakal. Really? Well, I mean, in the chiti, the kolsh and the sari. So then, let it say wheat, and we would have understood naturally that barley it goes down to the level of shahakal. Gemara says no. If it would have told us that wheat flour is shahakal, I would have thought that it's only wheat flour. But barley, you don't say any bracha, and it's so inferior wow. that the barley flour, you don't say any bracha. The Gemara says, um, melech uh, kamash malan, that you say a bracha shahakal, and the Gemara says, really? I could have thought that I don't say any bracha. Migarmi melech Is it any worse than salt and brine? Like pickle juice, probably. The Tanan, it says in the Tanya, it says in the Brisa, Ala Melech Vala Zamas, and Mishakal in Midbara, and salt and brine, or maybe it's a fish brine, I don't know. Uh, you say Shahakal, even though it's not really something that you would eat, maybe you take a little taste of it, but you, well, you don't sure really eat it. So, and you still say Shahakal. So I would have thought that barley flour, I don't say any bracha. Says, yes, it's necessary to tell me that I still have to say, it's still necessary to say that I say a bracha on barley. I could have thought that barley is worse. A person takes a little taste of salt, a little taste of the brine. But barley flour, because it causes kukiani, which is what it sounds like, intestinal worms. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. So, so, therefore, you shouldn't say any bracha on it at all. Kamash Malan comes to tell us that you say shakal. Even this Because you have benefit from it, you say a bracha. Now, when you start to compare these gemaras, going a little quick, but when you compare these gemaras, we said on olive oil, you wouldn't get any bracha. Kimcha desari, you do say a bracha, even though it causes uh, intestinal worms. Worm. So we have some sort of contradiction. Right. And what's going to come out is a fellow that I saw in the mikvah last week, Rabbi, Rabbi Weiss, Shalom Nayaf Weiss. Uh, so guy he wrote Svarim on Brachot. And in the air, in his safer, Binyan Shalom is called. Um, very good Svarim. He, he, he has a discussion in the air about someone that's eating um, it's a diabetic. Or, uh, and he's eating a piece of cake or something, should he say a brach? From the Gemara about Shem and Zayas, we shouldn't say any brach. From this Gemara, we see you should say maybe a shahakal. Uh, and he, he quotes from Rabbi Yashif that a first bracha he has to say. Because the first bracha you have to say on a small amount of, uh, and, even, and that doesn't really cause harm. It's what it's. The second bite, the third bite, and all of that. And after <coughs> bracha, you wouldn't have to say. You follow? Isn't that interesting? So, but the real question is that, look, we know that there's so many things that are unhealthy. The sodas and the crackers and the things and, uh, you know, <laughs> all of this stuff. So, what are you, add it to the list. So, the whole list. All of the, the food coloring stuff. So, you say a bracha on it. That, ultimately, it's, it's bad for a person. So when it comes to the olive oil, we said you don't say a bracha if it's damaged. It's bad for a person. It's bad it's to take a lot of it. Right. It's like anything. So the life. answer is, is that one thing doesn't cause it's harm. A lot of it doesn't. But it's over time. Well, we're talking about something that's damaging immediately. That's the, that's where we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Someone drinks it, and all of a sudden he has like you know he throws up or he has upset stomach or something like that. That's where. Okay, Kaira. Kaira. Is palm shoots or hearts of palm? There's a big discussion. What bracha hearts of palm are? Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda says, Bari Priyadam. He asked Rabbi Yehuda, What bracha on hearts of palm? He says, Bari Priyadam. Shmuel says that it's shahakal. 
Rabbi Yehuda Amar Bari Priyadama, why does he say it's a Dhamma? Peru, it's a fruit. So why don't you say, hey, because it's not a fruit of a tree. It's the tree. I can't say, I can say maybe Bari, bari ate, but uh, that's not a bracha. So I say Bari Moshe, Priyadama. Moshe. Yeah, when you eat the tree. Right. So Shmuel Amar Shakal Niyabudvari. Shmuel says, if you say, Shahakal, maybe there's more to this thing. Shmuel says that you say shakal. Why? Because if you leave it on the tree a little bit more, it's going to turn into hard wood. It's, and uh, you can't eat it. it has to, you can only eat it when it's young. So Shmuel tells to Rabbi Yehuda, you know, Rabbi Yehuda is a Talmud of Shmuel. He says shinana. Shinana means? Yeah, either bakti or sharp one. Kavaseich mistabra. You're probably right. That you say bari pri adama. That's nine because when it comes to radishes, seifel ahakshes. If you leave it in the ground, it's going to become hard like wood. And you still say adama. You see that something that's going to continue and become very hard doesn't change the bracha. So therefore, the hearts of palm, even though if you leave it, it's going to become hard. But the bracha should be as it is right now. The Gemara says falaihi, but he's not correct. Even though he was agreeing to Rabbi Yudi, he's not here because it's not, not the initiative of the Pugla. The person plants the, the, the radish for the Pugla. Pugla is the, the bulge, the, uh, that's the, the thickness, the tuber, the, uh, the radish. Dikla, but a palm tree, lay not the initiative of the curry. You don't plant it for the hearts of palm. Those days they didn't. Those days they planted a palm, a palm tree to get the dates. That's why the, the shaila becomes complicated today. But like from this Gemara, I can answer it. But today they have fields that they, they cut them down. Okay. Um, so the, what you, the, your intention, when you, what you plant it for is going to affect the bracha, which uh, makes a big deal uh, about oranges. Yeah. If really we should be saying uh, eight. Juice of the fruit. Juice of the fruit. We should be saying uh, eight on orange juice because you plant the orange for the juice mm-hmm. and that's when do i get my no, product you can eat it also, but, you can also eat. but the juice oranges are planted for juice big discussion well, why it's only in florida miami marathon right <laughs> we have our current goal the miami marathon uh, <laughs> okay the gemara asks the whole hecha the lay the delay Nati inshi adaita the hachilam of Archim Nala. If you don't plant it for that purpose, you don't say the, the appropriate brahana. For its laugh, but a kafer bush. Anyone that learns what this bracha is or learns this knows slaf. Slaf is a, um, a kafer bush so that has four. Oh, really? That has four products. And there's four products from the caper bush, four edible parts. And there's the primary, and then it works its way down to, to the leaves that are, that are. Now, the slav, if you look at the kotel, the tree, there's like bushes growing out of the kotel, those are slav. Slav, we also have with this chassid, walked by his fence on Shabbos, and he thought about fixing it. So he said, oh, because I thought about it on Shabbos, I'm never going to, to fix it. So he left it, and it slav tree grew over there. That was his blessing. Because the slaf gives you all these products. It says like this. So, slaf. The nati, the nati, and it said, the parcha, a person plants the slaf tree to get the caper berries. Which, by the way, caper berries are not the, the, the buds that we get. We have capers. It's little, little flowers. Unripe flowers. You look at the capers they put on the locks. Those are these little flowers. Um, but there's also berries, which are um, larger. I, I, when I was learning this Gemara years ago, I bought a, a jar of paper berries. And they're, they're um, the same thing. They're pickled, uh, but whatever. Okay. But they're larger. But they it's actual you berries. Pick up, you pick them out of them, whatever they're in. So you plant it for the berry, but with Tanan, but it was taught in a Mishnah. I don't know if this is a Tanan, it could be Tanya. Almini Nitzvah. Oh, yeah, those are much larger. You see that? Paper berries. I don't know. I, I tried to buy it in Whole Foods, but it didn't have a hefshik, so I bought it online. I had a huge jar of it, and I, I don't know what to do with it. But um, 
I, I they ate three. They weren't your stomach like the, like the monkey. <laughs> they were edible? Yeah, it was, it's like a sour, uh, you know, a pickled. Uh, Pickle. Yeah. So on products of the caper bush, on the leaves and on the outgrowths of the leaves, Tamara sounds like dates, but it's, it's these outgrowths of the leaves. I'm a very priadama. That's not the main product. So you say hadama on it. I have a tree in front of my house, Moringa, which is very medicinal. Moringa, so, yeah. so we eat the leaves. We say hadama on it. You know, it's on a tree, but it's, it's oh, nuclear. Yeah. Just leaves. I, I, I can't say a fruit. It's not, it's not really a fruit. Leaf. Yeah. I can't say very free. Just like a The The moringa? Yeah. Oh, yeah, like horseradish. Yeah, it's the after we finish. Valev yoyna, svala kaprisin, and on the berry and on the husks. Here you're going to say, very free eights. This is the berries. And on the husk around the berry, you say eights. What are we seeing over here? That the kaprisin, which are the tzlaf husks, you're saying uh, eights on it, even though it's not the main product. We said that if you don't plant it for it, you don't say uh, eights. Kaprisin. What happened? Went off? No, no, Dr. Stein wants to make a contribution. What's kaprisin? Oh, kaprisin no. are the husks. No, we don't want to hear that. Go, no, we don't. Should yeah, I take it out? <laughs> Dr. Stein? Hello? Some joke. Uh, we'll talk about it later. Okay. Um, so, yeah, this is a question. It's apparently you say eights even on things that aren't the primary uh, reason for planting it. Um, Rav Nachman Yitzchak, Rav Nachman Yitzchak says, it explains like this. Slav, when you plant a caper bush, not the inch yadite, the shusa. You plant it for every product that it's going to give you, every growth. Dikla, but a palm tree, lay not the initial diet of the kaira. You don't plant it for the hearts of palm. You plant it for the product, and the difference is very obvious. Because when you cut it down, then you lose the other products. But over here, I can get every product possible. So I planted it for the many products that it's going to give. Now, Ba'afagab, the Kalsi Shmuel, the Rav Yehuda, even though Shmuel praised Rav Yehuda, that says that you should say Hadama, but he'll say the Shmuel, mm-hmm. the Allah, like Shmuel, that you say Shahako. Okay. But today they have special farm for the hearts of farm. Yeah, Over here it could be so. different. Uh, uh, today it could be different that you say Adama. And some of the uh, websites of um, the Kashis websites, they say it depends where you got it from. If you got it from Brazil, so they have fields that they do it over there, then you say Adama. If you got it from uh, somewhere else, then they're just cutting it down, you know. Amar Avid Amar Rav. Rav says the name of Rav. Slav. Shal Orla. Caper bush of Arla, Bechutz Laaretz, outside the land of Israel. And the rule is, we learned this yesterday. Arla in Eretz Yisrael is Daraisa. Arla outside are the first the fruits of the first three years. And you're not allowed to eat. According to the Torah, you're not allowed to eat. Arla in Chutz Laaretz is either Halach Lomeshim Sinai or it's a Darabana. But it's more lenient. And the rule is, Suffolk Arla, a doubtful Arla outside the land of Israel, is permissible. <coughs> It's all interesting discussion. Purim is coming up. That uh, if you know that your uh, fruits are arla, you're not allowed to eat it. But you're allowed to go to the store and buy fruit. And not only that, in, in the store and buy fruits, if you, and you don't know if it's arla. And it's show you're not allowed to do that. You have to, it has to be certified that it's not arla. Chutzla, it's doubtful arla is permissible. Are you allowed to give your produce that you know is arla, shalach manas, to someone else, that, they and, and they won't know, and they should be allowed to eat it? So what's Shalach Manas? Is Shalach Manas something that you're allowed to eat? Mm-hmm. Or is Shalach Manas something that he can eat? <coughs> Interesting, Shaila. Okay, so over here, if you have Tzlaf of Arla, in it's in Chutz So Arla applies to the fruit. Zoyrik Esav Yainas, you're not allowed to eat the berries. Because that's Arla. However, Vaychal Esav Kafisim, but you can eat the husks. Now remember, the, uh, the husks were Ha'it. So you're allowed to eat them because it's not the main fruit. Lameimra. This is to say, or is this to say, that only the berries are the fruit and the husks are not the fruit. But I'll ask a contradiction. I'll mean a on products of the caper bush. You see, it's the fruit. The husks are the fruit. You say I ate on it. 
Why are you allowed to eat it and Narla? That is going according to Rabbi Akiva that has his own opinion. Mitnan is taught in a Mishnah, Rabbi Eliezer Reimer, supposed to be Rabbi Lazar. That's what they claim on the side. Tzlaf, Misasher, how do you take Meiser off Tzlaf? Now, Meiser is taken from the, from, the, from the fruits. You have to take, now on a tree, you really don't need to take Meiser, it's, it's rabbinic. But nevertheless, you take Meiser rabbinically. Um, and you have to take off all the three products over there, and you don't have to take Meiser off the leaves. Rabbi Kiva says you only have to take Meiser off the berries, not the husks. So very good. That would tell me why you're allowed to eat the husks. You're not considered Arla because that's not the primary pr- uh, pr- product. Why did Rabbi Yudha say that you're allowed to eat the Kaprisim, which are the husks? And what he really means to say is that he holds like Rabbi Akiva. Let him just say the Allah is like Rabbi Akiva. The Gemara says, no, I am a Rabbi Akiva. If he would say the Allah is like Rabbi Akiva, I mean, I feel a barat. I would think the Allah is like Rabbi Akiva in Eretz Yisrael when it comes to taking Meiser. Or the Allah is like Rabbi Akiva regarding the Arla in Eretz Yisrael. And that's not true. Kamash Malan. I'm sorry. Yeah, my Allah Rabbi Kiva have a mina pila baritz. Mashman, it comes to teach us kalamekal baritz, Allah Kamisa Bukhut Slaris. We have a rule like this. Anyone that's lenient in Eretz Yisrael regarding Arla, any position, any opinion, any lenient opinion regarding Arla in the land of Israel, that's the halacha that we accept in Chutzlar. So Rabbi Kiva is lenient in Israel, so that's the halacha that we accept in Chutzlar. Abel Baritz life, but in Eretz Yisrael not. <coughs> We're explaining why he didn't say Allah Rabbi Kiva. Umar says, Vinay Malach Rabbi Kiva Bukhatslaris. Let him say Okay, uh, the volume should be back on. So I hope I would say that regarding Meiser Elon, regarding taking tithe off off the uh, off the off the berries, tithing the berries, the Baritz Kufim the Rabbanan that even in the land of Israel it's rabbinic. That's why I'm going to be lenient in Chuslaris. I would say regarding tithing. We're going to be lenient because even in Israel itself, Meister is only off uh, products of the ground, the, the, the grain, but not products of the tree. But when it comes to Arla, it's Midar Raisa. In the land of Israel, it's Midar Raisa. I would say that outside the land of Israel, we should also make a decree. Kamash Malan, it comes to teach us that Arla, outside the land of Israel, we're going to be lenient. That's why he doesn't say the Allah is Rabbi Kiva, because they wouldn't have understood this exactly, that regarding Arla, we should be lenient outside the land of Israel. Ravina Ashkechei Lamar Baravashi. Ravina finds Mar Baravashi, the Kazarka of Yenis V'Kachal Kaprisim. He threw away the berries. Apparently it was Arla. The Kachal Kaprisim, but he ate the husks. And he was following right the opinion. The I'm sorry? After the tree. Is that what it says? Okay, and he was eating the husks, even though the, the tree was our, our Malay, my daita. Why are you doing that? Krabi Akiva, the Mako, you're going like Krabi Akiva, that's lenient, that says that the husks are not the main fruit <laughs> regarding Meiser, and that's why by Arla, love and market Beishamai. Why don't you go like Beishamai? If you're accepting lenient opinions, then follow Beishamai, that happens to be lenient in this case. Now, Beishamai is not 100% lenient, it comes out that he's lenient. <laughs> the, the, the Tanan was taught in, or the Tanya was taught in a Bryce. There's a discussion regarding a bush. Is a bush a tree or is a bush a vegetable? So Machlik is Beishama and Beisila. Yeah? It goes like this. Beishama Yem Rem, I'm sorry, regarding a caper bush. Beishama Yem Kalai and Bekara. You're not allowed to plant vegetables in a vineyard, but you're allowed to plant another tree in a vineyard. Apparently, the roots of a vegetable will 
get more nourishment from the vineyard than a tree's roots. The tree's roots are harder and they won't mix with the other, but the roots of the vegetable will mix with the, with the vineyard and the, the nourishment will go through and that's considered kalayan. So I can plant a, a, an olive tree next to a, um, a grapevine, but I can't plant a, uh, um, a piece of wheat or, 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 you know, or vegetables next to a grapevine. So what about a tzlap? Is a tzlap a tree or is it a vegetable? So Beishami says it's kalayim bekerem, that means it's a vegetable. It's kalayim. Kalayim is a forbidden mixture in a vineyard. Beishel lime ain't kalayim bekerem. Beishel says it's not a vegetable. And it's not kalayim, it's considered a tree. Eilav eilam oidim shechayav barla, but both agree that it's chayav and arla. Now Beishel is very clear. It's not a vegetable, it's a tree. That's why it has arla. Beishamai has a problem. Beishamai says that it has arla. You have to wait three years. They also say that it's not a tree. So hagupakash, it's a contradiction. Amrit slaf bishamim klayim bekerem. Bishamay says that it's kalayim, that means it's a vegetable. Alma min yaraku, it's a vegetable. Vahadatani, but then it continues to teach. Elav elam edim shchayiv barla, both agree that it's chayiv and arla, that means it's a tree. Alma min ilanu. Kumar says, holy kash, that's not a problem. We know Bishamay. Bishamay smukha misafkalu. Bishamay is strict. Because it's a, a doubt. And they're, they're strict about both things. They're strict. They don't know if it's considered a tree or a vegetable. So what they do is like this. When it comes to Arla, they say it's a tree. When it comes to Kalayim, they say it's a vegetable. That way they get both strictnesses. But what comes out from this? That if I have a doubt in the land of Israel, that's how I paskin in Chuslaret. I have the opinion of Beishamai that says it's a vegetable. I can follow that opinion in Chuslaret and say that there's no Arla. According to Bishamay, it's a doubt. Clearly, it's a doubt. They're just strict in Israel. Utanan, and we have a Mishnah that teaches, a doubt of Arla in Israel is Asr. The Surya, which is in the, um, uh, the Syria area, that's a, uh, a mixture. Uh, uh, do I have to be strict or not? So that's Mutter. That means it's permissible as long as I don't know about it. Um, Syria is a land that David uh, added to Israel, but he didn't have all the other lands of Israel, so it wasn't really considered added on, added onto Israel. But in Chutzlar, I can do even more. I can be Yerid, but like, yeah, I can even go to the actual property that has all the trees in it, and I can buy from that property. Mm. And I, as long as I don't see, well, actually, you're going to like it as long as I don't see the person taking it off the tree. And I can say that it came from another tree. But so, you, very lenient. But you don't see Cam Harmon. Yeah, according oh. to this. So the Gemara answers, our question, our question was, why don't we accept an even more lenient opinion and eat the berries of the caper bush? This is Ravina asking Mar Baravashi, because Beishama is of the opinion that there's a doubt if, if a caper bush has arla, if it's a tree or not. The Gemara explains the big rule over here. Rabbi Kiva, B'makam Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Dinan Kavasei. If there's a machlek, it's Rabbi Akiva, because he's arguing with Rabbi Eliezer, we'll go with Rabbi Akiva, right, outside the land of Israel. Beishamai, Makim Beisel, Leinu Mishnah. Beishamai doesn't even count. Yeah. It's not even considered an opinion. Wow. That's hard, very, very hard, strong. Hard, very hard, strong. Gemara says, you had a whole discussion over here regarding if it's considered the primary part of the tree to see if it's going to be our law. The tape clay the Nasa Shaimala period. Why don't you say that it's the Shaimer? It's yeah. the protection for the for the fruit. Mm. And okay. Arla applies to the peels. <coughs> so Virachmana Mavaralt and Marla say Esperiai that you will you will consider it's forbidden the fruit. And it says S Piriai. What does S teach me? S Hatafala Piria. S comes to tell me something else. Because in Hebrew, like E T, E T means together with. Right. It's coming to include something. That's my explanation of this Josh. Um my Neo. Oh, and sir. and what is that? So you felt like Rabbi, Rabbi, who was it? Nachman. So the S is always added there. Oh, oh yeah, well we're learning the S, but I'm explaining that the S why is it adding? Because because it's it, S could mean could mean with. S could mean with. So my new shirt. Right. 
my neo and what is it? Shemila Peri, it's the protection, like the peels. So why are you saying that it's not early because it's not the primary? You have another problem. It's the peel. It's the protection for the fruit. Oh, my Rabba. Rabba's going to give us three answers here. Until, until it gets, each one is going to get rejected. Hey, when do we say that a protection for the fruit is going to be orla? That's only if it's on the fruit, when the fruit is on the tree. And it's on the fruit when the fruit is off the tree, an orange peel or something. That's a, a protection for the fruit. But over here, when the caper husk is, when the, when the caper is off the tree, the berries off the tree, the husk falls off. It's not considered a, a real protection. Abaya has a question. A part of the top of the pomegranate, mitzarefes, that will combine to the pomegranate to be the size that's required for tumma, huh. which is yeah. the size of an egg. Now, that means that the part, that a certain part of the, of the top of the pomegranate, the pitham of the pomegranate, is considered part of the food. Vahanet shaloi, but the, the, uh, the, the flower of, on it, Amit Starf does not combine to be part of the fruit. Very good. So those little things, those little uh, flowers inside are considered, um, by the way, that's the, the, the reason for the, um, for the cover, probably. Oh, so the, 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 the nates is what? Is the flowers? It's these little things here. Okay. So Midakamar. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> okay, uh, but, but the, the 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 flowers of it don't combine to be the fruit. No, me the kamar in The fact that you say that the flowers don't combine, alma de la Obviously, it's not considered the fruit. Okay, good. Bitanya gabi arla, and it was taught regarding arla. Kripi riman van the peel of a pomegranate and its flowers. Kripi aga is a margarinian. The peels of wal uh, <coughs> walnuts, walnuts, and uh, and the seed, the the, the nut. Chayavim barla, they are chayavim barla. You see what's going on over here. When it comes to a pomegranate, the flower that falls off it after it's off the tree is considered arla. Therefore, the kafisin, the husk. That goes on the uh, that's over the the slough, the caper, which also the arla. Ella Maraba, Hechamin Nasashem La Peri Rabba adjusts his opinion. When do we say that it's considered a protection for the fruit, that it should be Arla? Hecha the Isab Shaskamar Peri, that's only if it's there at the time when the fruit completes. But high kafras, when it matures, when it ripens. But this husk, less of a shaskamar peri, it's not there when the fruit ripens. I, I question if that's what it's referring to. Because the, I, with those flowers that are in the thing, I, when I, I get a pomegranate, it's still there. Oh, wait, he's trying to say that it's not that Maybe it's not on it. Flower I think there's another flower. Aini, mm. is that really so? Vamar, is it, do we really say this? Vamar of Nachman, Amar Rav Baravua. Rav Nachman says the name of his, his father-in-law. Hani Mesachli the Arla. This is called the the calyx. Okay. It's some sort, I think what it is is that, like. Do you know on the um, the casing that covers on the coconut tree, there's like a casing that covers the, the small coconut mm -hmm. before they, they start to open Very up. Very oh. like a little, yeah. that, those, that calyx, that uh, piece of Arla, Asiri. Because it's like a husk. It's falling all over the bridge. Yeah, the Ramavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavav
what the rabbis argue, they say at that early stage, it's not even considered a fruit, it's considered part of the stem or whatever. So, if we go like the Rabbanon, let's say that early stages of fruit are not considered a fruit, that means that the protection for a fruit cannot be a protection at early stages, it needs to be a protection at later stages. Okay, so we have an answer. Maskefler of Simi Minar Dai, Bashari Lani, Mikligi Rabbanon, Alea, and other trees do the Rabbanon argue. It's only by grapes that the Rabbanon argue. Look at what it says. Vatanana was taught like this. When are you not allowed to cut down fruit trees on Shviz? The rule is that you're not allowed to destroy fruits of Shemitah. Now, if you have a tree that you need to cut down that has fruits on it, you're going to be destroying those fruits. Uh, you're going to ask me, you're not allowed to cut down a fruit tree anyway? That's Taisus. For whatever reason, you're allowed to cut down this fruit tree. And the only problem is that you're not allowed to destroy the fruits. When are they considered fruits? At which stage of development are they considered fruits? Once they start to bud, that's already, once the, the, the first fruit comes at the first uh, vision of the fruits, it's, it's recognized that there's a fruit growing there, like the mangoes look now. That's already um, a fruit. When it comes to carob, it's when they start to look like chains. That means when they start to have those indentations in it. Tubishvat uh, fruits, right? Bagifane, grapevines, mishigaru, at the early stages of Gerua, which is also smother. Bazesim and olives, mishemitsu, when they flower. Visharkal, um, is in the other trees, mishitsiu, when they come out. That means at the early stages. Vama Ravasi, Ravasi says, who baiser, who gerua, polalava. That baiser is the same stage as gerua, which is the stage of polalava, which is a white bean. Where it says pull alavan, are we talking about beans over here? Sal kadaitach, is that what you think? Aleim ashirik pull alavan, the size of a white bean. Now we explain like this: Man shamat la damer baisar in smadalai. Which opinion holds that baisar is considered a fruit, but smadar is not a fruit? Now those are two stages of development in a grape. The earliest stage is smadar. The next stage is baisar. We're not talking about champagne grapes that are small anyway. We're talking about a regular sized grape. It starts very small. First stage is smother. Most right. people hold that that's not a fruit. The next stage is developing. It's called baiser. Then finally it becomes, uh, who holds that smother or not is not a fruit, but baiser is? <coughs> that's the rabbana. Uktani, sharkali, lanis, mishitziyo. But nevertheless, all other trees from the time that it gives off the fruit. So you see that it's considered a fruit on all other trees, even at early stages, which mean that a caper fruit would be a fruit already when it still has the kafis and the husk in it. El Amarava, we need another answer. Rava says, When do we say that it's considered protection? That's only if you take off the protection, the fruit dies. Over here, when you take it off, the fruit doesn't die. And Haviyovda, there was a case, the shaklul and eats to remind us. They took off the the flower of the pomegranate, the Avashi Maina, and it died. Ah, <coughs> that's why the, the flower of the pomegranate is considered a protection for the pomegranate. Shaklula Parcha de Betisa. They did this experimentation. They took off the flower of the, the husk of the, uh, of the caper berry, the kind Betisa, and it still stayed. You see, it's not a protection. It can, live, live, it can exist without it. The Hilchasa, this is from the Gainim, this is not the Gemara. It says, Kamar Baravashi. That looks like Mar Baravashi, the Zarka Sevyanis Vachlas Kaprisin, that you're allowed to eat the husk, even though it's within the first three years. Middle Gabi are La Perin innocence regarding our, let's not consider the fruit, the husk. Legabi Brachas Namilaf Perin inno, it's also regarding Brachas, it's not the fruit. So when you eat those little caper uh, flowers at the, that's on the locks, what Bracha is it? Falei Mavarchin La Bari Preza, La Bari Priyadama. You only say a Bari Priyadama on it. Taisvis asks on the Gainim, he says, What are you talking about? He's saying that because it's not Arla, that's why it's going to be Hadama. It's not Arla because in Chutz it's not Arla. But, but that, in Eretz Yisrael, what are you going to say on it? You're going to say Ha'it. So you're going to say Ha'it and uh, you're going to change the Bracha? Yeah, in Chutz Okay, I guess we'll have to stop here. Okay, yeah, that was a nice one. Just a little page. Page. Just a Thank you.